Okay, so welcome to our Friday class today. Um, we were we were planning on doing a class on women's health and hormones, but we decided, Megan and I both decided, since due to what's going on in the world around us right now with the coronavirus and all of the questions and concerns that people have, we thought we would focus on viruses and what are they and how do we how do we deal with viruses um, in our homes. So I'm going to start off and kind of share some of the things that I do and then I'm going to turn it over to Megan who's our nutrition expert and she'll share some more things in that realm. But some of the things that I do, I mean honestly when we're talking about whether it's viruses or bacteria, it doesn't matter. Any pathogen that is going to affect your immune system really goes back to strengthening your immune system in the first place. Really, truly, all of that, there's a lot of panic right now about getting sick. And yes, we need to wash our hands. And yes, we need to limit our contact with pe people who are sick. Those things are true. But the real fight against viruses and pathogens starts started long before you're ever exposed to one with how you take care of yourself and how you take care of your body and how you strengthen your immune system. So some of the things that we have done in our house to strengthen the immune system is we use on guard a lot. On guard is an incredible immune strengthener. It's kind of like you think about going to the gym and lifting a bunch of weights to strengthen your muscles. On guard does that for your immune system. So right now, one of the things that I have, well, I always have oils. They're the way, the place that they are in my house, I'm gonna tip that just a bit, is they sit on a little island in the middle of my kitchen, my bag of oils. And last week, some people in my family got some colds. And so I pulled out some On Guard, I pulled out Melaleuca, I have eucalyptus and frankincense and I think those were the main ones the peppermint I think was another one I just pulled those out and set them on top of the island and they're just sitting there for people to use oregano was another one that we did um, and so I just leave those out for people to use whenever and one of the things that my husband has done for years that has really helped him is he takes a drop of on guard under his tongue every single day he just puts a drop of on guard under his tongue every single day to help strengthen his immune system. I also have one of my sons who he struggles with his immune system. And so he has a on guard roller bottle that he keeps by his bed. And every morning when he gets up, he puts it on his feet. And every night when he goes to bed, he puts it on his feet. And that helps to strengthen his immune system. We also have been diffusing on guard. And so Oils can really, really help a lot in strengthening your immune system, but that's only one piece to the puzzle. So I'm gonna turn it over to Megan because she's gonna fill in the rest of it. Hi guys, I am uh, Megan Anderson, for those of you that don't know me. Um, a little bit of background of uh, where, I, where I came from and how I've learned all I've learned about viruses these days. So I have a bachelor's in public health. Um, I spent six years active duty with the United States Public Health Service um, and pandemics were our jam. Um, and so we worked with all the, I worked in, in Minnesota, Wisconsin and Michigan with the tribes and I worked on their emergency preparedness plans. Um, we worked on how they would respond to outbreaks. We worked with their clinics to prepare. Um, you know, in, in the idea, in the event that this would happen. Um, we did a ton of public health work. I have trained over a thousand um, school staff and clinic staff on infection control and daycares. Oh, and daycares had starts. We did a lot of those trainings on um, infection control and how to keep ourselves healthy. So um, when it comes to this viruses being my thing, I, I can boldly say I, I know viruses. I know how to stay well and I know how to keep the public healthy. Um, in addition to that, I just um, last fall, so about six months ago, got my certification as a holistic nutritionist because throughout my career as a public health professional, um, I learned that food is food impacts like everything from our environment to our energy uses, to our energy crisis, to our oil um, prices, peak oil and climate change, 
food is everything and all that. And then I started to realize the impact of food on our bodies. I used to just say, oh, I'm a foodie because food tastes great. And, to, and then I realized how food, um, and this came from my work with the reservations and with the Native Americans, is food is medicine. Food is our first medicine. And when we start looking at food as a medicine and as um, you know, a way to, to take care of our bodies and fuel our bodies, it changes our whole perspective of how we think about food. Um, so I just wanted to follow up with what Stephanie said. She had a great thing, um, and, and I was going to share how we use oils, but I just be, would be repeating Stephanie. Um, we use our On Guard all the time, and when she talked about strengthening the immune system, it made me think about that too. Like, you wouldn't go to the gym once a week and say, oh, I worked out so my muscles are strong, right? No, you <laughs> would go every day um, to keep yourself strong. And so that's how we need to think about our immune system. Um, and I was just watching um, President Trump on the news. He had like a, what do you call those thingies? Um, a press conference um, this morning. And, um, you know, he was talking about the, the antiviral medication from the FDA. And they're working to see if it works on this specific virus. How to, like, pandemic proof your house is work on your immune system. It works on, then you work on everything. Then you don't have to worry about chasing that virus and you don't have to be worried about chasing that bacteria and having to worry about each individual thing as if they're something different. If you just focus on your immune system and strengthening your immune system, you are light years ahead. Sorry about that. I've had so many telemarketers call. I don't know if that's like a thing or something. I don't know. But if any of you don't know me, I'm in Alaska, and, and sometimes we feel a little bit cut off from the rest of the world. Um, so you guys can fill me in a little bit more about what it's, what it's like out there. Um, but yeah, I wanted to just talk about that, you know, strengthening our immune system. And this is something we do all day in all of our choices every day. It's not just something that, um, oh, I'll use it when I get sick. Well, then, you know, you just invited sickness to the party there. So I think there's plenty of that to go around, and we can just work on being healthy. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, too, is it seemed like on, on doTERRA's website, On Guard became the new toilet paper, and it was sold out there for a little while. Um, and y'all can fill me in on the whole toilet paper thing, because I don't understand that either. Um, and so um, I'd be really worried, I told Ryan, my husband, if it, I'd be really worried if the toilet paper manufacturer was no longer manufacturing toilet paper then I would be worried, <laughs> but they're not, they're healthy, they're working, everybody's working, like it's great. So <laughs> don't think there's a, worry, a reason to panic there. Um, but I did use my book and looked up um, eucalyptus and clove are also really great um, in the virus category. So um, those are two that um, if you can't get your hands on on guard, do not worry, there is plenty more. Um, there's always enough, there's always plenty. And you can um, just pivot and grab some eucalyptus and clove, and that's what we did. So um, those are the two things I wanted to. Hey, Meg, and... can I interrupt you for a second? Cinnamon's another one. Cinnamon. And oregano. Cinnamon and oregano are great. And yes. They're... Yes. And are those, I don't know if you're on your account, but um, I, as of two days ago, they were in stock. Um, Oh, I'll look right now and I'll let you know by the end of the video. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, yes. So just, you know, just think that, um, and this is something I, I've helped a few people in this process too. Where it, you know, if everybody's going after one thing, that's great. But there's probably likely nine or 10 other options to choose from that nobody's looking at that you can go grab and you're going to be equally protected, if not better. Um, another thing that I have, um, before I grab, jump into nutrition, is air filters. Um, I don't know how many of you have air filters, air purifiers at home, but you know if you do, get them running. Uh, if you don't, Amazon has not run out of them, and they filter viruses out of the air. So we have our air filters going. Um, I got them originally because we were in a, in a new house, and I wanted to uh, filter out the VOCs from the new paint, the new sheetrock, the new flooring, you know, all that kind of stuff, and so we've had them. Um, but they also filter out viruses. So it's just another layer of protection that you guys can just do. Um, but really, where you're going to get the most bang for your buck is focus on your immune system. So um, I will just jump right in here and figure out how to share my screen because I have a few things I wanted to share with you guys. 
there it is. It's always like right in front of me, but then I, then I don't see it. Um, all right, here's the share button. So hopefully y'all can see my desktop here. I have a, a few things from, um, this is straight out of my holistic nutritionist um, coursework. And, um, you know, one thing to, to talk about too is, um, again, you know, kind of in our Western culture, what is focus on that. You know, like just focus on the immune system. It, we're all, we're whole beings. We're all encompassing. Um, you know, to, to live your best life, look at all the different areas, you know, and, and my joke since the beginning has been, you can't eat at McDonald's or sugar all day or soda all day, then put on it on and expect it to work with your immune system. Your, your cells need that nutrition. They need that energy and support and those nutrients and the micronutrients to be able to use the oils effectively. So if you're going to use them, you know, um, if you're going to use the oils, you know, get the best thing out of your butt by taking care of your whole body, your whole self. And it includes, you know, your mindset and your energy and your spirituality and your body and all of that. Um, you know, really look at yourself in your whole life. Um, and another one too, sorry, I keep getting distracted, but if you're anything like us, um, you know, we're into our reserved foods and stuff like that. So we're eating canned food and we're eating frozen food and we're not eating as much fresh food and it's still winter outside, so we don't have our gardens going. Um, so it's really important to have a high quality supplement. And I have looked to the ends of the earth and I cannot find a better one than doTERRA's lifelong vitality. And that fills those gaps that we might be missing um, in nutrients and micronutrients that we might not be getting because we're not eating that fresh pro produce, even this time of year regularly, or maybe, you know, it's just in this time when we're at home and produce doesn't last, you know, that long in our, in our, grocery, in our pantries like a canned food or a frozen food would. So that's just an idea. Um, so get, um, you know, the full picture there. And then here are some foods that um, support the immune system. And we can, um, I have a few coursework, um, courses in the, in the works to do the, you know, your whole living. Um, but for today's class, I just wanted to pull out the immune system. Um, and hopefully this helps. But if you were going to be like going to the grocery store and saying, hey, you know, Megan and, and Stephanie said on this video that I should be eating for my immune system, um, you know, make my oils work better, get my most money out of my oils, what would I pick? And so these, uh, you know, I want to pull up this screen because it has it here. Orange produce, um, that orange color is the um, carotenoids, um, carotene, beta carotene is what I say, um, but carotenoids is the actual, um, uh, the name for all the different carotenes, but that's in orange, in orange produce, like carrots, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are amazing. Sweet potatoes are one of the only foods my daughter can eat, um, and Costco only carries them in the winter, so <laughs> we're uh, figuring out how to get sweet potatoes, but I think that also comes in a canned variety. Um, but that vitamin A is super important. I called our naturopath um, when this first started to break out and I was like, what do we do? And she was like, up your vitamin A levels, eat well, avoid sugar, and, you know, uh, take herbs to support your immune system. And I was like, okay, I can do that. Um, but think winter squash, that might be something that you guys have in your grocery stores um, right now. It's definitely something for us that we're going to be growing this year. So we, because those store all winter long, winter squash are amazing. Um, you can be eating, eating your winter squash in April from your, from your garden before, uh, from last summer. Bell peppers is another great one. Calendula infused broth. I just, Learn another thing. I just made calendula infused oil for my daughter's salve um, and shared that on my website. So if you want the recipe, it's there. But I guess you can also infuse it in a broth and that is definitely orange. So that's really good to know. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And leafy greens, of course, leafy greens are just so important. Um, get those in any way you can. doTERRA has those, uh, the green powder, also really important. Um, and when I can't get greens into my son, he, I can taste it in smoothies, but he loves it. So I scoop it into his smoothies and he is good to go. So that's another one to think about. Um, healthy fats, uh, avocados, salmon. I come from a salmon state. Wild salmon, note that it says wild salmon. Wild Alaskan salmon, buy that. Do not buy farmed salmon, it is disgusting. Um, and I don't say that just because I come from a salmon state, but um, how big those fish are grown and what they're fed, you would not want to eat that. 
Um, so look on the package for wild salmon, Pacific salmon. Um, the colder the water, the better the quality of the oil in the, in the salmon. So you want it up in the Arctic regions. That's why, you know, if it says Alaska, you know, it's a good one. Um, sardines, I probably wouldn't eat that. Um, flax and hemp oil. Um, those are really, really good ones. And then nuts and seeds, of course. Um, I'm trying to think how we get those. Mainly, um, we make a lot of our things like mayonnaise and stuff out of cashews now. Um, so we have a lot of recipes where um, we use cashews as the base for most of our sauces. Even our, our cheese sauce, um, you, you know, think of the nacho cheese sauce that we all love. Um, we now make that out of cashews and um, uh, nutritional yeast and some other things. And so um, some definitely, that's an easy way to do it. You can pour that over your potato, uh, over broccoli, you know, like when I was a kid, my mom would put cheese Whiz um, on our vegetables, make us eat our vegetables. You don't need to use cheese Whiz now. You can put <laughs> the cashew sauce, cashew with yeast tastes a lot, with the nutritional yeast tastes a lot like the uh, cheese Whiz. Um, a little history onto my nutrition um, as a kid, which I, uh, I love my mom and she did great and I, I ate those veggies, I did. Um, but vitamin C, so that's another one. Vitamin C is so important and I know you can go buy it in a little packet and it's a powder and you can pour it in your water and, and um, you think it's great, but it's not nearly as great as getting it from food. Um, it comes with other different micronutrients in that food as a prepackaged vitamin. Um, you need all of it to be able to assimilate it into your body. Um, somebody said this, and I think it was even on here. Um, you're not what you eat, you are, you are what you absorb. Um, and so making sure that you can absorb those nutrients is very important. Um, so strawberries, bell peppers again, hot peppers, rose hips. Rose hips are one of the highest um, vitamin C components there is. Um, and you likely have this, I'm trying to think of Idaho, um, where we were in Minnesota and we, where we are in Alaska, rose hips grow wild. They're wild rose, Rosa rugosa. You probably have this in your woods, if you have woods, um, if you're not like in the high desert. Um, so you, you likely have that in your environment. You just go gather those, you boil them up, it's so easy. Another one that is super high in vitamin C is raspberry um, stems. Um, I call them stalks. My husband makes fun of me because I call tree trunks stalks too. But you know, like the the stalk that the raspberry grows on. Um, you just cut that up into like two inch little um, sections and put them in boiling water. And that is again one of the highest vitamin C things you can um, you can drink. And it's really it makes a great tea. Um, pungent aromatics. I know you've all heard garlic. Um, that one is kind of like, everyone knows garlic is good for the immune system. Um, I'm gonna just move our little faces here. So garlic is really good. Um, ginger, any of those that have that really strong flavor is also, um, you could think is good for the immune system. Um, it has to do with what is in those food items that is really good for, for immune. Um, also, uh, they have oregano and thyme which is interesting, we should look at that. We have the essential oil, oregano and thyme. So depending on what parts of the plant that was taken, it might have those um, immune systems. It likely does because those are two really great ones for the immune system, but um, yeah. Stephanie, I'll interrupt have... you for a second. I have oh. studied those two and oregano and thyme are really good on pathogens, viruses, um, fun fungus too and bacteria those two are those two oregano and thyme are probably two of the oils that i use the most honestly when it comes to pathogens of any kind Ooh, and they have an affinity for your lungs and gut which is basically what we're what we're seeing with today's events aren't we okay so that's really good to good to know um what do you think about diffusing them for the, I was just thinking lungs, so topical and diffusing, would that be kind of how you use them, Stephanie? You could if you could stand the smell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we use them mostly topically um, and internally. Okay, yeah, I cook with those like, too. Like really, if you mix thyme and lemon and eucalyptus together, that's a really, really good respiratory and sinus blend. That's right. You taught me that back when, yes, Rook had a cold, like 
a year ago. Um, I'm going to write that down again. Thyme, lemon, because I think I just did the lemon and eucalyptus, but I forgot thyme. Thyme, lemon, and eucalyptus. Well, and doTERRA is not out of those three, so <laughs> those are three more options for recipe. We call that the stuffy nose blend at our house. Stuffy nose. Well, yeah, and this one, I guess this virus from what I was reading, which it seems like it changes just because we don't know, um, and that's just the nature of the game, but it seems like it attacks the lungs um, more more viral, virulent than um, maybe another area of your body. So anything to protect your lungs is, is a good thing, respiratory, and, and then strengthen your lungs. Keep your lungs healthy. All part of our immune system. We're all part of the same thing. Um, it's it's really when you when you look at it that way, all that overwhelm to me, I guess, um, went away because it's like, oh, I just need to focus on this one thing, not oh, what do I get to do for my lungs and what do I get to do for that virus and what do I get to do for that bacteria and what do I get what do I have to do for that or that? No, it's not any of that. You just focus on keeping, you know, your immune system and and living a holistic life. And all that's gone. And it's just, it makes everything so much easier to me. Um, so mushrooms, this one, yay, I love mushrooms. Um, and an exciting fact, um, we're growing mushrooms. Um, so we have, I think, three or four varieties going um, in our greenhouse right now. So mushrooms have to go through a dormant phase and then they fruit. And so the mushroom is actually the fruit of the fungus. So, um, so we're waiting for it to warm up here in Southeast Alaska so we can have our mushrooms fruiting. But um, in other areas, like um, on, this, on this page here, chaga, that grows on birch trees. And in Northern Minnesota, that was like the thing. Everybody went out and had their spots and they would gather the chaga and they'd make a tea out of it. Um, and it was really, really um, supportive for your health. Um, so just look to see if you have have birch trees around. I think they grow on another kind, but I know they grow on birch. And also make sure that you know what you're looking for, because I think there's one that also looks like it, um, but it's not chaga. I think it's just something else. It doesn't hurt you, but it doesn't do anything either. Um, and then fermented foods. Do we have any fermented food experts here? No? I have a little bit of experience. This is something where our chiropractor in Bemidji has been harping on us for, um, I don't know, 10 years to do this at home. I don't know why I don't. Um, it's really easy. And so um, the big things that are easy, um, kefir is super easy. You can get the grains off of Amazon. I got them from a friend. Um, they grow, um, so you start with a few of them and then they multiply, so then your friends do have extra to give you, so don't think you're taking from them. Um, they're alive bacteria that grow in the, in the milk. And I was making that um, for my son's uh, formula, baby formula. So we would use the whey from that and then we'd eat the kefir and it was it's super healthy. The stuff at the store is also healthy, um, it just has a lot of sugar in it. Um, I'm just going to check the chat here because I see we missed it. Jana, um, oh, Jana, you probably had that. She put, um, yes, roll them on your reflex points for the lungs and bronchioles on your feet. So that's probably the stuffy nose blend, the thyme, lemon, eucalyptus, I think. And then Jamie, I just started making kefir. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so you'll have to let us know how it goes, Jamie. That, that's super fun. Um, and my mom was making it with almond milk. So I gave her some of my grains years ago. And um, we don't have access to organic um, milk, raw milk up here in, in Southeast Alaska. So I have stopped because I thought I had to use that. But she said, no, I've been using it in my almond milk and making almond kefir. I don't know. I guess it's worth a shot. <laughs> yeah, time in, Jamie. Yeah. I just want to get your attention while I find the mute button. Um, <laughs> so I got some kefir starter from a friend of mine last week, and it's actually – not the grains. Do you know of another kefir starter where it's not the grains? Because she's she had done it before with the grains, but then you have to like I don't know sift them out or something. Yeah, drain them out. But this it's it's almost it's just smooth like yogurt, you know, just like kefir. And so I just just sit back. I just add a you know a couple tablespoons into a pint jar and fill it up with milk and set it out. But then when it's done, it's done and 
I don't need to, there aren't any grainy things. So I don't know where she got it, but it's really good. Oh, yeah. That's, well, there's another option. And Stephanie. Yeah. That's the one I've used. I haven't ever used the grains. I've only used the, the creamy one. So I don't know. Yeah, what it's it really creamy. Now. I don't have any now. Yeah, the grains, fishing them out was not my favorite thing to do in the world because they were kind of slimy. Um, but yeah, so if there's another way to do it, by all means. That. I don't know where yeah, it, yeah I don't know where I'll have to ask her where she got it but well and so far I'm the only one eating it <laughs> <laughs> exactly it pays to ask your friends because you know half of us have this laying around you know we've got all these things growing on the counter and that's my goal is to be like a good mom is to have all these things on the counter that are various you know, concoctions of random things that's a gold standard <laughs> So ask around. You, know, well, you might find um, that your friend, least expected, has some to share. And so um, do, you, do you keep the starter um, and then, or do you just take from each batch into the next batch, like a couple? Okay. So yeah, that's, it's the same concept. So it's the bacteria just working next to next, like kind of like sourdough bread. Is it sourdough bread that you do that? So same concept. Yep. Um, let's see here. Kimchi. You guys ever had kimchi? No, oh, yeah. I see it at Costco. I'm tempted to buy it, but it's a really big commitment because it's a big jar. My husband's had it before. He said it was pretty nasty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one fermented. That one, for folks that don't know, it's, it's fermented um, vegetables like uh, peppers and things like that. Um, uh, maybe if it was cooked right. Um, so maybe I'll try it. My thing is always I want to try it at a restaurant so I don't have to commit to it's likely made how it's supposed to be made versus me making it at home and I don't have to commit to a lot of it. So if I don't like it, I can just, um, you know, move on. But uh, another one I am I am almost full German. So sauerkraut. This was the one that I could get my mom behind. She's like, I don't like pickles. I don't like anything fermented. I don't like any of that stuff. I said, but what about sauerkraut? She goes, I love sauerkraut. So um, this was something our chiropractor had us doing, um, and it sounds strange at the beginning, but then it got less strange as we did it. Just having like a spoonful of sauerkraut before each meal. You know, just you could put it on your plate or you could just scoop it out of the, I just ended up scooping it out of the jar. Um, but you just take just a spoonful and you eat that. And I always got, there was a kind, there was the canned kind that I did not like as much as, versus a jar. It came in a glass jar. Um, and it's different brands up here, so it's different up here. But um, that one was good. The kind that came in the glass jar, it had a red label. I don't remember the kind, but that one was really good. I could just grab a spoon of it and eat it, and it was good, even though I did not normally like sauerkraut. You could also make your own sauerkraut, and that's probably what I should do, but I have not done that yet. Um, and that's one thing we want to grow up here is some cabbage, so we can make our own. All right. And then fluids. Um, so we know that one because I was going to pull up this other book here. Um, and so this is another um, book I had in my course for, um, for holistic nutrition. And so I was just going to pull up here. This doesn't look like the page. These are some, oh, sorry, I was on that book. Um, must be this. I had these all primed. I told Stephanie, I'm like, I'm priming these, so I have them all ready to pull up, and then <laughs> uh, my memory doesn't serve me that well, so I'll have to see here. Um, I think this is the one. Yes, this is the one. So these are just some of the nutrients you need. Um, the zinc, zinc is very important. Zinc also comes in um, hemp hearts, so I know we can get that at Costco. Um, but in bulk. So zinc, it's one of the highest zinc containing foods that we have is hemp hearts. So it's really great. Omega fatty acids, um, salmon, again, wild caught. You can do the sardines if you can. I can't. Um, vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin D is very, very important. Not just because we don't have much sun around right now. Um, it's just super important for modulating the immune system. Blueberries, cranberries, garlic, pomegranate, echinacea is really good. Um, but there was one section in here that kind of had um, a good defense as an offense, which is very important. Um, 
there was one thing here where I thought it had like a list of what to do to tank your immune system. Doesn't that always happen? Like, you know, you think, okay, I want to pull this up and then you go to pull it up and it's not where you remember it being. <laughs> but I thought it was in a list like that. Anyways, um, what it was, was to tank your immune system is, uh, you know, not get enough sleep, not drink enough water, eat sugar, um, don't move your body, you know, things like that is going to tank your immune system. And right now, I know a lot of us are feeling overwhelmed and scared and afraid and uh, uh, chaotic and, and not feeling supported. Um, so we tend to kind of draw in and, you know, um, stay at home and you know maybe even you watch some netflix and, and binge on that which definitely self-care is really huge but if self-care is preventing you from taking action sometimes self-care looks like taking action um getting out just going for a walk outside is not canceled um you know we've been trying to make sure we do an adventure every single night um and we get out to a beach or we get out to the docks and the other night we were looking for crabs and sea stars um you know get outside just get your lymph moving our lymph system has no um, way to move itself. It does not have any muscles moving the lymph around your body. The only way to move lymph in your body is to move. So pull up a yoga video, um, do anything you can, you know, get moving, even though moving or taking action does not feel like what you want to do right now. Um, it's so important to keep ourselves healthy and also look at the energy behind what we're doing. If we're doing it out of fear, out of scared, uh, scarcity mindset out of, um, you know, what, what if it's going to happen um, and feeling that afraid and inviting fear to the party. Um, you can do it that way, or you can do it out of love and support. And, you know, you're, we're keeping to ourselves to, to help support the larger community. So, you know, we're just kind of sticking, so, uh, social distancing is the new term. Um, you know, out of love and support for everybody else, out of the elderly folks around, out, out of the love and support of the folks who have compromised immune systems. You know, we're just keeping our germs to ourselves out of, out of that way. And it feels a lot more like we're serving our greater good versus, you know, I am afraid and crawling under a rock um, and just letting the devil run our lives out of fear. Because that is one thing my coach taught me, you, you know, a few years ago. Fear does not come from God. Love, peace, and joy comes from God. And so if we're serving God, you know, think about what we're doing and the energy we're putting behind it and, and what we want to bring to the world. Um, so that, with that, you know, um, <laughs> that's all I have to share. But hopefully you got some takeaways uh, from this presentation and just easy things that we can just start doing right away, no matter what we're seeing outside, no matter what shortages we're seeing, we can just take care of ourselves. Does anybody have any questions or comments before we end? And we'll post this on the Naturally You group too, so we can rewatch it and and you can have if questions come later, you can post them and just tag my name or Stephanie's name and and then we'll see them. Make sure you tag our names. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, Jana. So thank you, ladies. So hopefully. Got some good takeaways. We'll all stay healthy. We'll all get through this and we'll all have life after the virus. Yes, it's all gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're welcome, Jamie. Thanks for being here, everybody, and we'll see you next week. See ya. Bye.